Hi, Phil Nice here. Welcome to tutorial number four in my series on soloing. If you're wondering what these uh, rather bizarre vocalizations were all about at the beginning here, well, that's the theme for today's tutorial. I said that I would uh, try to look into the the black box, the uh, the part of improvisation uh, where the ideas come from. Uh, we had a little look at the technical side, but this is the uh, this is more the the content. Where does it come from? Where do we get it from? I also said I would try to answer the question of what happens when there don't seem to be any ideas. And today's tutorial will provide some of the answers to that question, if not all. Now, what I was doing at the beginning um, was a process that I just like to think of as doodling. And uh, when you say doodling, you tend to think of something like a pencil and a piece of paper. Um, doodling in art as, as, a, as a visual form would be something like just doing this on a piece of paper, just following your, whatever you feel like doing, clearing the mind of any thoughts really of, uh, of anything much, just impulses, just what do I feel like doing, go this way, go that way, just take it sort of as it comes until I feel like, yeah, what I found with doodling is that whether it was done with a pencil and a piece of paper or with my voice, um, was that it all seems to be all about clearing your mind of of any kind of thoughts uh, or obstructions, any kind of idea of where you might want to be going. No, it's more like just just going with the flow. Now, if you're astute, you'll probably be saying at this point, Wait a minute, that's not really a very good metaphor for, uh, for for soloing, jazz soloing, is it? Because it's not that simple. I mean, we're not starting with a, a blank slate. We're not starting with a blank piece of paper and just doodling on it. We're not starting just uh, with nothing and filling it up with, with sound and vocalizations. Um, surely jazz improvisation is a little different to that. And I would say, yes, it is. Um, what I'm dealing with here, I would call free improvisation. This doodling is really just improvising, improvisation in with no direction, uh, changing direction, doing whatever you want to do, um, just from your pure impulse. Uh, whereas uh, the other kind of uh, imp improvisation we will be doing in, uh, for example, in a jazz standard or over a blues um, sequence would be much more of a, a guided um, improvisation. And that's the key difference. Uh, the reason why, and I will be talking about guided um, improvisation in the next tutorial, but the reason why I'm starting with this free improvisation is because um, I would tend to dig to uh, define guided improvisation really as a form of restricted improvisation. Um, guiding something is, is is giving it guidelines, giving it uh, some barriers, um, giving it some uh, a certain uh, limited area in which it can move and restricting uh, the area of movement. Now, I would contend that uh, the barriers, the restrictions, the guidelines are not going to be in use without any content. So this part of it is where the content comes from. Now this is one of my criticisms of more technical approaches to soloing, uh, is that they tend to look at uh, the guidelines um, or the restrictions as if they were the content. And uh, what are we talking about here? We're talking about harmonies, uh, keys, modes, scales, whatever you want to call them. But I think that's a little bit akin to looking at, say, a roadmap um, and saying, uh, here's a work of art. 
No, it's not. It's just it's just a depiction of something, uh, hopefully an accurate depiction of something on the ground that's going to be useful to you um, if you're planning to go from A to B. Um, it's going to be useful to you to know. It's going to be useful to you to know that there's certain places you know won't be able to go because there might be a mountain or a lake there. Um, so the in as interesting and fascinating and beautiful as that map might be, it's not a work of art. Um, it's it's a depiction and it's a tool and it's a guideline. Um, so when we're improvising, our, our guided improvisation um, is a is a movement of ideas and content against a background, a, a, a roadmap, a maze, uh, some kind of restricted, uh, restrictive structuring um, that keeps it within a certain area. But without that content, without that movement, without something happening, you're going to end up with something rather... If you see the roadmap as the content, um, as the creative content, then you're going to end up with something rather dull, uh, sterile, mechanical. Now, somewhere, somehow, we can all do this. Um, it's not something that's, that, that we've never done. If you just look at a small child... Uh, doodling away on a piece of paper, uh, talking to themselves at the same time, probably maybe singing a little bit while they're doing it. Um, it's something that we have deep in our makeup. And um, the fact that we may have trouble doing it later on in life as adults is because we've basically learned to suppress it. Um, and as a necessity, we've learned to suppress it because if we spent all our time just following every impulse, every and any impulse we have, we would soon get a visit from the men in the white coats. Um, so we learn, probably somewhere around puberty, uh, that uh, we need to suppress a lot of our impulsive movements and articulations uh, just in order to get along in, in society. We learn it around a time when we come of age and put away childish things. Um, but later, the question may arise, well, how do we get that back again? Um, I think it's there. I think it's a question of, of finding the freedom to do it. Um, this little activity that I started this video with is something I actually use when I'm sound checking uh, on stage, especially if I'm doing my own sound check with my own microphone. Um, you know, you hear all sorts of cliches like uh, one, two, testing. Um, and uh, at one point, um, I basically decided that uh, the best thing I could be doing there was just making some noise with my voice and not thinking about it at all while I'm thinking about turning the knobs and getting the right sound. And I found that I was actually scat singing and uh, doing things that were possibly quite interesting. Um, and the fact that I was thinking about something else while I was doing it was giving me the freedom to do it very freely. Um, and I'd later used that as a, as a soloist. So it's a question of uh, finding the freedom to do that kind of thing. And it may well start with just doing it uh, when you know that nobody is listening to you. Um, but then again, I would say find some situations where um, you'd even dare to do this uh, when there's other people around. So just to finish off here, I would just say that do this. You know how to do this. Somewhere deep down, you know how this is done. So have fun with it. Find it again. Um, it can be as melodic or as unmelodic as you like. It can be notes. It can have. Uh, it can follow a, a diatonic key. It can be all over the place. It can be non-notes. It can just be sounds. It can just be rhythmic things. It can be anything you like. But find a way to let it come. And rest assured that whatever it is, it will be you. And in the next tutorial, we'll look at guided improvisation, which is essentially what we've been looking at here, um, only against a structured background.